Hello and welcome back to the Out of the Park Developments YouTube channel. My name is Alex Murray, also known as AZ Axel, and today we are continuing kind of a two-part series about how to make player development happen with player scouting, and now finally, player development. We're going to be talking a little bit about how the game does player development and how you can get the best results for your player and the development that they have, either in your minors or even in your majors, depending upon the settings and staff that you have in your system. So if you've got all your OOTP games open, let's go ahead and jump right in and let's get started, shall we? Alrighty, let's jump right into this tutorial officially now. We're going to be starting in the front office player development page because this is where a lot of the magic is going to happen. There's going to be a starting point here and we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do as a general manager and then how to view the development of your players over time. And it will go hand in hand with your scouting um, as your scouting is going to basically be the visual uh, evidence of your development all right now the first thing you need to know is that the game will by itself develop your players people will develop they will progress up in better results and they will degress down as they get older naturally as players get older their abilities will drop as they're getting um, older from a young age, once they start introduced into the league at whatever age they start at, 18, 20, 22, which is normally the drafting period of time frame, they will develop and they will get better and better. And they can also have, you can also have regressions in your prospects as well, but most prospects will take at least an uphill climb. Whether that's a fast uphill climb or a slow one, depends on a couple different things and you do have some slight control over that the first thing that you can do to increase the chances of your player development to be as successful as possible is to make sure that your player development budget is as high as you can push it now i know some people say that around 30 million to 40 million it basically is negligent it's not even possible to see a difference between that and say 5 million but i have noticed a difference at least from about 5 million to 20 million so the first thing you want to do is if you're doing a rebuild if you're doing a rebuild of your team and you're going to go around trying to get new players and start from scratch i highly recommend having your scouting and player development budgets as high as possible get rid of all your bad contracts immediately put these budgets into a good positive place and they will help you out a ton now your budget's not the only thing that can influence your ability to develop your players. The other way you can do that is by making sure that the minor league coaching staffs that you have in your minors are set up correctly to be able to develop your players. Now, there's a couple different things you're going to want to look at. Every single minor league team has a manager, a pitching coach, and a hitting coach. For pitching coaches, this is the ratings area. If you go to one of your pitching coaches, you're going to you're not really going to care about the reputation. That's not as important as some of the other things. Your pitching coach focus is going to be a big influence on how well they pinpoint certain types of pitchers and develop them in particular, all right? This is like a works best with uh, information category. So, for example, Mike Maroth here. He works best when he's focused on finesse pitchers. So you really want to make sure that if you've got a top top 10 prospect who's a pitcher and they're a finesse pitcher, you want to give them the best coaches possible to influence that finesse ability of theirs since that's their focus. You want to bring that out. Now, handling development is something that I don't know if it works entirely for the pitching coaches or the hitting coaches. I believe it's mostly just for the managers, bench coaches, and the likes of those, but it's not a bad thing to have on a pitching coach as well. So if you can find somebody who handles development, influence mechanics, you know, um, and of course, teach pitching for pitching coaches, teach hitting for hitting coaches. You want those to be as best as you possibly can. So, for example, Mike Miroff is not a great pitching coach. He's decent, but you can get so much better. And he doesn't exactly have very much handling of development or influencing mechanics. So, if it was me personally, I'd be getting rid of Mike Miroff, especially for AAA. I'd be looking for somebody who has much better pitching coach abilities, um, 
you got to have something better than a decent, especially on your major league team, which is why Rick Kranitz is on our major league squad because he teaches pitching excellently. And even though we're really not caring about him handling development or mechanics at this point, the excellent on teach pitching is why he is here. All right. So you want to make sure that for pitching coaches, they have the, um, for the minors, sorry, for minor league pitching coaches, teach pitching is as high as possible. Now, you may not be able to get all of them. Pitching coaches that are that good in terms of quality may not sign for your minor league staff. They may be looking for a major league job. But as you can see, we can get someone like a Dean Hartgraves here. He's outstanding on the mechanics, excellent on the development, and legendary on the teach pitching this is a person we should sign for our minor league staff to be able to make sure that our minor league development is as good as possible. Same thing for hitting coaches. You want to make sure that for hitting coach spots, um, you want to have the best possible that you can get for all of those positions. If you've noticed that your development is not going very well, you might want to review your your um, your coaching staff for the minor league systems in your in your organization. They may not be as good as you think they are, and that might be holding you back. Because you can pour all the money you want into your player development, but if your staff that's actually developing the players and helping them get better is not good, you're not going to see much development. All right? So those are the two things that you're going to want to look out for when you're doing player development. Um, on top of that, of course, the managers are also going to need to have handling development, handling it. Uh, aging is only good for major league coaches because that's in case people are starting to get over the hump. They're over 29, 30, 31, and they start to, to age. That's how you're going to keep players from aging too quickly. You want to have a manager that is going to handle aging well, all right, because they will keep them fresh at that point. For managers, handling development is going to be huge as well as working well with the players that they have. The relationships they have with the players is important. For pitching coaches and hitting coaches, the relationship tab isn't as important, um, but it would be a nice bonus. Always keep that in the back of your mind. It's a nice bonus. But those are going to be the two ways that you're going to handle your player development. Let's talk a little bit about what that looks like and how you can see it. Now, we mentioned this in the last video when we talked about Christian Pache, how his scouting has gone up over time. And that's mostly because of the fact that he is a very good prospect and he's developed quite nicely. Now, there are definitely going to be some situations where you can see player development over time. In fact, if I, I went back to that too quickly. But if you go to your player development in the upper right-hand corner is a Plopin player development report. This is all of the, and you can see all of it from your head scout or OSA, depending upon what you want to see, what has been done over the past um, either year, three years, or even three months, if you want to be more minute in terms of player development. So, for example, Yolmer Sanchez has developed. I'm more interested in seeing if there's maybe a really good example of a player who has jumped... And I don't see too many. Alec Berger might be an interesting person to review. I'm much more interested in seeing if we can find somebody who's developed some pitching speed. Aha! Jared Johnson is a good example here at this point. So Jared Johnson has gotten better, and it just hasn't updated his profile page for us yet. But if we go to his scouting, you can see that Jared has actually gotten a speed boost. He's now ranging from 99 to 101 miles per hour, and OSA hasn't caught that yet. So the rest of the league doesn't know that he's gotten a little bit better. Now, we still believe that he could get maybe a little more development on the movement, but you can see how his abilities have gone up, and that probably is an indication of him being very young, still at the age of 20, when you're anywhere between 18 and like 23, 24-ish, you can still earn additional velocity to your pitchers. And that's a huge way to be able to increase their abilities on the field. But um, this is a good example of somebody who has done well in our system with good development. You're really only going to be able to see that over the course of many, many years of progress. 
All right, I found a better example for you guys at this point. I wanted to bring up our Desert Dreaming franchise. Me and TJ are doing this back on our Twitch panel, uh, Twitch channel uh, as we go live every single Tuesday. Bubba Sangster here is a prime example of somebody who has developed very, very, very well. You can see the potential ratings by our head scout, which is Dane Johnson, has had him go from a one-and-a-half star prospect when we drafted him out of the first-year player draft. We thought maybe he'd be a two-star player at best. Maybe he could develop some extra pop, but you can see because we've put so much money into our development, we've made sure that our minor league coaching staff have been really good. Bubba Sangster has developed into a three and a half to potentially four star caliber first baseman. The eye has gone through the roof. It used to be around 40 to 55. Now it's up officially to 75 potential on the eye. The power has gone up, has gone up. The contact has generally gone up a little bit. That's still the one part we're still trying to develop out of Sangster. But this, this is the prime example of what you can do when you have the bright budget for your player development and the right coaching staff in place to develop the player. Now, sometimes the development doesn't quite go so well. We've had a couple examples of people who have not developed well. Um, I remember Christian Robinson was one of them, and he did not develop well at all. In fact, let me find him really fast. Christian Robinson, as you can see has not done well. So sometimes it's just out of your hands. Sometimes the player has bad seasons, the development um, doesn't quite come through, and you can't do a thing about it. So putting money and even the right staff into place doesn't guarantee success. But if you have the right staff and the budget, you will have more success stories than you would if you had low budgets and the incorrect staff. So hopefully... With this video, you guys can see some examples of what you can look forward to with putting the right pieces into the right place at the right time in the development and scouting part of OOTP. So, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll have more videos just like this down the road. We'll have a whole bunch of more stuff to go through. We have, I think, a couple more for this series, and then we're looking at an even more in-depth franchise series and some more tutorials down the road to explain even deeper details and some more tips and tricks on how to play OOTP. So stay tuned, and we'll have more videos just like this down the road real soon. I'll talk to y'all later.